At some point in time, you, you stopped punching her and she continued punching you, essentially. Yes. Is that what happened? I just remember Did trying you lose to your get temper? her off of me. Did you lose your temper? I was reacting to her temper. She was coming at me. I was could telling be, her to sit could it down. Could be that your excitement, your anger, that you yourself could have caused this No, sir. Injury? No, sir. That's absolutely ridiculous. How yeah. is an 80-pound girl who can't lift anything and who hasn't been able to lift anything... Well, no one's denying, that, no one's denying that you had a 300 fight. 300-pound lady remember, on the ground. Remember, we're going back to one simple issue. The interaction you had with the defendant, the direct cause yeah. of your damages. I did nothing. Okay. I, I have she nothing came me. How much strength did it cause to rip off her windshield wiper? You had the strength to do that, didn't you? You ripped... It's a windshield wiper, ma'am. It's yes, not a 300-pound woman. Okay, she, first of all, she's not 300 pounds. But second oh, of all... 400. Do you know... <laughs> because you seem so eager to talk about how little you weigh. Do you know what the I most did. common reason, excuse me, for rippling after a breast implant surgery is? Low starting body weight. Well, I didn't start at the low body weight. I lost a lot of weight within that month because guess what I was the second sick. main cause of rippling is? Significant loss of body weight in the initial months following surgery. In addition, choosing a large size implant in reference to your body shape, which as you point out is naturally thin, can cause rippling. These things can all happen without any physical altercation. But 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 the scar tissue and rippling of that nature was caused by me using my arm like this to hold something Says very heavy you. off of me. You can see. Do you want to see my boob? Oh, we, we've seen the pictures. We have the pictures of the I rippling. mean, I can show you, like, the muscle. Okay. We're not doctors, that though. You, you, your doctor okay. should have said it. I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Rolfe. I, I had to acquaint myself to some degree with this kind of procedure, and I may be wrong, but what I discovered was that rippling can be a side effect can be, yes. of the very operation that you, you received. I think in 10%, this is an unfortunate side effect. But our question is, how are we going to believe that the defendant caused the rippling as opposed to the actual procedure itself when we know that this is an unfortunate side effect? I have nothing further. No, uh, I'm good. Uh, we're going important. to excuse both of you. Thank you very much. We will deliberate on this matter and render a verdict. Thank you. This was a very interesting case, and I've learned a couple things about breast augmentation, that there can be several factors that could lead to rippling, and without the evidence that says that this altercation was a direct cause of that rippling, then how can we legally rule that it was? So it could be a number of things. Un unless, unless, of course, we were to conclude circumstantially yeah. that the fight contributed to the rippling. Yeah. I don't see any basis to conclude that, particularly because of the timeline. The doctor said she should be fine if she didn't immediately notice anything. She went back more than three months after this altercation, and I don't believe for a minute that there was any rippling at that point, because it doesn't make any sense that the doctor's notes would say, everything looks perfect, plaintiff is pleased, but just leave out that there's rippling. Mm -hmm. That's what a doctor's there for, to say, gosh, there's a problem in follow-up, regardless of whether I caused it or not. There was nothing three months later. And also the description of the fight, if you will. You know, there was physicality about the throat thing, but, uh, but I do think that she lost her temper. Yeah. And, I mean, they both and, agree that the defendant started it. Yes. Right? She, right. she laid her hands on her first. Right. But, but she went I, excessively too far. I couldn't conclude that she proved by a fair preponderance of the evidence yeah. that this defendant caused it. I, yeah, I don't think that the chain of causation has been met here. All right, so we have a verdict. We have a verdict. Okay. This courtroom is again in session. Okay, Ms. Rolfe, Ms. Gagliano, we have reached a unanimous verdict. Ms. Rolfe, you had the burden today to prove that this physical altercation was a direct cause of this rippling to your left breast, and we just don't see it. We don't see the evidence. We can't even evaluate the circumstances and say that this was a direct cause because there's so many different factors that can cause this rippling. And we don't need to get through all of those reasons. We are not doctors, but we have a job to do here, and that's to evaluate the facts and the law. And without evidence, we cannot conclude that this physical altercation is a direct cause for the rippling. And so for that reason, the verdict today is to dismiss your suit. You feel real good about yourself. And this courtroom is adjourned.